everyone to today's meeting of the Transportation Licensing Commission. If you'll please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Pursuant to the provisions of Section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Um, last month's meeting minutes have been circulated uh, by Mr. Fields. Has the commission had an opportunity to review those minutes? Yes. Is there a motion regarding approval? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, uh, a public hearing today. Um, the first involves uh, the transfer of Checker Cab. Mr. Fields? Um, Checker Cab is a question of transfer <coughs> from uh, Mr. Mulligata to his sons, uh, Jonathan Mulligata and Ebenezer Mulligata. Neither of them are present. They were here at the last meeting when it had to be announced, so I'm assuming there might have been a confusion, but everything is in order. Um, they met the deadlines and provided the appropriate information. Has any, anyone else asked to speak on the issue? No. But we do have to have a, a public hearing right. before that. Um, is there anyone in the audience that wanted to speak on the issue of the checker cab transfer? At this point, we'll close the public hearing on the transfer of Checker, checker Cab. Uh, uh, do any of the commissioners have any comments regarding the request to transfer ownership? No, motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We also have a public hearing for our annual horse-drawn carriage um, uh, applications and um, Mr. Fields has informed me that there were no applications submitted. Um, because of that, I've, I've been informed that we do not to even need to answer the initial question. Is that correct? Correct. There's nothing. There are no questions to ask. I'm, I'm assuming that we need to open the meeting, have a public hearing, but then close it very much like you did the last one to meet the rule. Or um, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you can go ahead and do that. Well, if there's no reason to, we can move. So. Okay. There's no then there's no reason to move on it. You, it's just. We'll wait till next year. All right. Um, the next item on our agenda involves a request from Sugar Creek Carriages. Uh, we're going to push that to the heel of the docket. Uh, we think these other matters are going to be really short, and then we'll pick back up with that. Uh, the next item is under Wrecker and Towing Services. We've got uh, three driver applications. The first is from David Douglas. Yeah. <laughs> In making his application, Mr. Douglas, would you come forward, please? In making his application to be a record driver, uh, he failed to list three things. One was a 2014 driving on a suspended license. The other was uh, uh, 2003 was a handgun charge, uh, and then in 1994 had an aggravated assault. Those three things were not a part of his uh, uh, disclosure. Mr. Douglas, do you uh, have an explanation why you had not listed those additional uh, arrests? I just didn't know. Um, a tow pro gave me a printout of everything that was on my record, <clears throat> and they left off them three. They were trying to help me uh, pass the requirement. Topro, Topro and Cottons do background checks on their drivers. They're, unfortunately, they're, their background checks are not the same as ours, and they, they sometimes might not be complete. So he, he was uh, working off that, I guess. The 
additional um, uh, charges that were not disclosed, none of them would be disqualifying, would they? No, sir. <coughs> Is the aggravated assault conviction what triggered the uh, handgun charge against you by a convicted felon? Uh, I really don't remember. <clears throat> but I think it was something to do, you know, an assault on my, uh, on my lady friend. Yeah, because you list a lot of misdemeanors, one through nine of them, but you left off the felony charge, which is a more serious one. Well, I didn't know. You forgot about your felony conviction? Yeah, back in the day. What year was that? Oh, I think it was 2003, 2004. Uh, 1994. 1994. But then you got reminded of it when you got arrested as a, uh, in possession of a firearm by a convicted felon in 2003. I got convicted of it? No, I'm saying you got arrested again okay. for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, a prohibited person, wow. in 2003. I didn't, I was, I forgot, I forgot about it. I wouldn't have known I had it if she wouldn't have given me a copy of it. These are old, and I actually believe him when he says he forgot about his felony conviction from the looks of his demeanor today, so I move to approve. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Congratulations. All right, thank you. We have... Can I leave now? Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, we have um, also an application from Charles Hinton. In making his application, uh, he was listed extensively, and uh, I felt like he needed to see him. I do, I do not believe there's any disqualifiers in here, but it was extensive, and you've asked to see those. He does have uh, the owner of the company that he would be working for present with him. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. No, you got it. Oh, almost the same. What was the July 26, 2014 aggravated assault charge about? July the 26, 2014. Was that a, a five, uh, five aggravated assaults? Is that correct? I'm reading off of your application. You wrote aggravated assault. That's so whenever I was going through a relationship split up, and the lady and her boyfriend and the kids chased me from Mountain Juliet to Nashville. So case got dropped and dismissed because the judge seen through her and everything that everything was false. So did you finally get rid of that gun? Which gun, ma'am? I don't know. You have three or four <clears throat> possession of an illegal weapon. 
weapon possession uh, several times here in different years. <coughs> Unlawful it, possession of a weapon, 2004, 2005, to where, um, 2011. I don't believe in guns and I don't own no guns. And the weapon charges that they had got me with uh, was with my first son's mother. I was leaving her house. She called the police, had me pulled over. And at the time, I was a security officer at mechanic. So I had a 48 inch pipe, a machete, and uh, a billy club so but gotcha. no I don't own none of that I'm a total different person now I've changed I became a man instead of a boy yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. so your 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 license is valid because I'm, I'm seeing a failure to appear <clears throat> on uh, driver's license suspension several times. The latest was in September of 2016. All that's been taken care of? Yes, sir. I have F endorsements and everything on my license now. That was back whenever uh, I was in my younger age with child support, right. what kept taking my license backwards and forth. I've paid out thousands and thousands of dollars to keep them. Courts would take them back, you know, this and that. Just backwards and forth with child support as far as my license. Uh, but I finally got everything back, got everything situated. I got my son in my life, so doing better. I make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank motion you. passes. Thank you, Mr. Henson. All right, thank you. We also have an application from uh, Amir George Shaman. making his application he failed to list two charges both in 2005 one for aggravated assault one for reckless driving everything else was on What was the outcome of the aggravated assault case? Actually, you want to hear all the story? Nope, just the outcome. <laughs> As somebody just complained about me in 2005. I don't know who's the person to write now. I go three times in the chair in the court. He's never show up. Were you found guilty or not guilty? It's dismissed. Dismissed, okay. Yeah. I got the proof <coughs> paper. Even right now, I don't know who's the person. The whole thing keep it on me. It's not match on me. I got to prove the paper. And, and it looks like your reckless driving was dismissed. Yes. Why, why didn't you list these two charges? I don't know. The days I was going to church with my girlfriend, somebody called. No, no. Why did you not list them in your application? Uh, I forgot about it because it's a long time. It's in 2005. And I was going to court when I filled the application. I tell them to give me all my record. They give me just two for the seat belt. And if you if you choose to approve this, the one thing we also need is that be contingent on the company. There, that's a new company that's finishing their paperwork. They still have to finish paperwork, but his application should be contingent on the company completing the application. I'll make a motion to approve contingent on the company completing their application and being approved. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Was that motion aye. passes? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Can I leave? Yes. <laughs> we also have some driver applications for other passenger vehicles for hire. Uh, the first is Evelyn Jean Paris. Ms. Paris. In making her application to be a driver, uh, she failed to list um, 
driving on a suspended license. That would have been in 2013, I think, was the day. Other than that, everything else was in order. The only recent violation is 2016, dismissed. I was sorry. looking up something else over here a second. You said um, this is Miss Paris, right? Mm -hmm. And she failed to disclose a uh, failure to appear charge. Yeah. Okay. That was all that she. Everything else she listed. Move to approve. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Motion you. Motion passes. We also have an application from Amanda Wynette Morales. Mr. Fields. In make her application, she failed to fully disclose a driving on a suspended license charge. In what year? Um, it would have been in 2009. the failure to disclose <laughs> driving on a suspended license this is a interesting response to the disclosure request I received a driver's license April 1998 current I have an estimate of eight violations since the first issued which includes speeding and minor moving violations my knowledge this is correct I had forgotten about the suspended or, or well I was hoping you were going to say it was one of the eight that you were listing <laughs> or that you didn't list but uh, I move to approve <laughs> Second. Thank all those you. in favor aye. Aye. aye motion passes thank you uh, we've been asked to uh, review an ownership modification request of a star limo service to add Vishal Betty mm -hmm. Mr. Fields uh, in order to uh, uh, be able to add a, a partner on the application they have to to uh, make application to the commission for that change to be made uh, the application was completed and uh, they met the they met what the law requires motion to approve second all those in favor uh, aye motion passes uh, and then lastly we have a company application by Payless limousine Mr. Fields Payless made application to be on other passenger vehicle for hire company. The paperwork was completed and they are uh, they qualify. Anyone like to make a motion regarding move to approve Payless Limousine's application? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Motion passes. Um, now we're back uh, under horse drawn carriages. There's a request from Sugar Creek Carriages. Uh, it, you will recall at your last meeting, uh, Sugar Creek was given a 180 day uh, suspension. Um, Mr. Uh, Blackburn, on behalf of uh, Sugar Creek, filed a letter with the commission to ask that you would reconsider and he wanted to make a suggestion on uh, I certainly will not presume to speak for Mr. Blackburn but I think he has a suggestion to make to the My commission. My wife does it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Mr. Chairman members of the commission. Let's see we have two new commissioners today who uh, uh, were not uh, present at the last meeting so I will uh, describe in, in, in very briefly what happened the last time. Of course, in these cases, you have no discovery. Uh, and when we appeared, there was a gentleman named uh, Russell Bassett who testified, and he played some uh, excerpts from some video, which we had never seen before. 
uh, and contended that uh, there were some sort of undescribed, unnamed ordinance violations. At the conclusion of this evidence, uh, there was some difficulty voting on this because uh, it was uh, stated in response to questions that uh, no ordinance violation had been demonstrated. Um, now, what was done then, remarkably, was that uh, Sugar Creek Carriages itself was suspended for six months. Um, my specific request today, uh, I'm going to <coughs> urge you to set that aside in its entirely, <coughs> entirety. However, my specific request with regard to that, if you only wish to modify it, is that uh, that ought to be changed to a probation, a condition of which would be that Mr. Smith would not come uh, downtown during this six-month uh, period, uh, a probation of the company. The reason for that, uh, aside from the fact that I'm going to submit to you in a moment that this case was simply not proved, is that this would create an enormous hardship. Uh, there are a number of people here who are present today who would be out of work for six months who are charged with nothing, who have done nothing. Uh, those persons are, were, would be in danger of losing their homes uh, with, without uh, income for six months, living, losing their, their uh, transportation. In one instance, um, uh, the individual has farm animals. If, uh, if there were a foreclosure or difficulty with that, it, those animals would have to be uh, uh, dealt with, uh, all because of a charge made against this man. Let me remind you for a moment that in 17 years of uh, work in the carriage industry here, there's not been one single charge brought against Mr. Uh, Smith's company uh, by a citizen, that is a third party citizen, someone other than a, <coughs> um, a person who is uh, in competition. In 17 years, there's not been one co consumer complaint made to the Better Business Bureau on this company. In fact, we have a lady here today that I didn't ask to be here who showed up, uh, Miss uh, Linda Darrell. That's Linda Bankston. My, Linda Bankston. Oh, Bankston. Well, it says Darrell right here. But but Linda. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Wrong one. Uh, Miss Bingson, B E N G S O N. Uh, who uh, is uh, part of a neighborhood association, a small business who has uh, engaged Mr. Smith many times and has something pending now. Uh, I didn't ask her to be here. She learned of this and came on her own volition and wanted to speak on his behalf. But before I do that, I would like you to see the people whose livelihoods this action has uh, severely endangered. Those who would, who, uh, whose livelihoods would be in danger because of that ruling. These people, thank you, these people have done nothing and they shouldn't be uh, punished. Now let me remind you at this point uh, that uh, the suspension was of Sugar Creek but it was allegedly made uh, on the basis of some conduct attributed to Mr. Smith, uh, not to anyone else. Uh, Mr. Smith, at my suggestion and request, has not been in this area uh, where the carriage uh, tours are offered uh, downtown since the day of your ruling, even though that's not required. Uh, there is a provision in which uh, when you file for the application for certiorari, the ruling of the uh, commission is suspended while that matter is being litigated unless uh, the executive director specifically finds that uh, that the individual is a danger to the public. There was no such finding. So consequently, because that uh, petition has been filed and the writ of certiorari has been issued, uh, there is nothing that would legally prevent him from being here. But in good faith, because I wanted to demonstrate to you that he would, in fact, adhere to this condition of probation if you converted it to that and allowed these people to continue to make a living, he has done that. Now, he did that with one single exception, and it was during the day, and it had nothing to do with carriage. And that is because I asked him to uh, take a picture for me, which I would like to submit to you and make a part of the record. 
You remember that there were only two instances that were attributed to Mr. Smith personally. One of those is he was alleged to have pursued an individual uh, while he was trying to call the police. We submitted nine sworn declarations in this case. I'm not sure if you had an opportunity to meet them, read them, but they describe this incident. Uh, <laughs> there are a few topics of more uh, pertinence today than, uh, than inappropriate uh, sexual conduct on behalf of men against women. That's what happened. This uh, individual that he was trying to call the police on had placed a hand on the thigh of one of his drivers, and he was intoxicated at the time. That was one of them. The other had to do with him standing next to a carriage, and Mr. Uh, uh, what's his name, our accuser? Bassett. Bassett. Mr. Bassett uh, said that uh, Mr. Smith was blocking the exit to the carriage. Well, the view from the camera didn't have any perspective, any depth perspective. It didn't show that. Um, what it did show was Mr. Smith standing there in silence, not making any gestures, not moving towards anybody, threatening no one. I will show you these, if I may, these, um, if I can approach. These are photographs of where this occurred. And uh, the first one has marked where Mr. Smith was standing. The one time he's gone back downtown, it was the purpose of taking that picture at my request. As you will see, there's two things that are of importance. He was at least four feet away from that carriage. Um, he has said in his declaration, which apparently was not considered, that all he did was stand there and that he said to these people once they had exited the carriage, I hope you enjoyed your tour. Um, there was no complaint made by any of these uh, customers or citizens. This all came from Mr. Bassett. Now, who is Mr. Bassett? Mr. Bassett is a man who worked for this uh, company, for Sugar Creek, who came before this commission in 2009 and had difficulty with marijuana usage, had test positive for marijuana. His initial permit was given to him conditionally, where he had to expose himself to random drug tests for a year before his permit would be made final. Uh, had we known of this and called uh, Mr. Smith as a witness, he would have told you that he terminated Russell Bassett for possession of, of uh, drug paraphernalia in one of his vehicles. This is the man whose word was taken at that hearing. Mr. Bassett, as you will recall, works for a competitor. Um, the issues that we have here it was that a person with a history of drug use who is described as having used marijuana on carriages in these declarations we submitted to you was allowed to make statements with no visible proof, resulting in the shutdown of an unblemished business for six months. Now, as I stated, Sugar Creek carriages can survive this despite how unfair it may be. Mr. Smith is willing not to be in the vicinity of these persons who may make accusations against him for that time. However, what we're asking if you decline to set this aside entirely uh, is that that be converted into a probation period, a condition being that he not come downtown. Now that will cause no harm. We start with the fact that Johnny Smith has never caused any harm and there is no proof of any harm. There was no proof in the hearing here uh, a few weeks ago of any actual harm to anyone. Um, I would uh, also point out that if you look at these photographs, you will see what I did argue the last time. You see where that carriage that Mr. Bassett was operating was sitting. It was sitting in a no parking zone. It wasn't even in a carriage stand. The only ordinance violation that was proved that day was that one on the part of Mr. Bassett. Um, I don't know if Ms. Uh, Bingson would be permitted to speak, but 
uh, she would like to, to address you if you permit it. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So I'll take silence as a yes. All right, if you'll you. please introduce yourself uh, for the record. Yes, my name is Linda Bangson. I own Daisy Hill Bed and Breakfast. The address is 2816 Blair Boulevard. And might I add, one of the four legally licensed insured bed and breakfast in Nashville. So moving on, um, I've known Sugar Creek Carriages for many years. Um, for the last six years, we have hired them for our neighborhood fundraiser. It's the only fundraiser we do. This is Hillsborough West End Neighborhood Association. And you probably know where we're at, um, but I've been on the board for the Hillsborough West End Neighborhood Association for the last 12 years. And we've always struggled with fundraisers. We came up with one um, when, um, well, six years ago, and, and we said, you know, this is this is the way to go. Hillsborough West End neighborhood is not a neighborhood that would just go out and decorate their homes. But in this event, we've hired Johnny um, and Brenda and Sugar Creek Carriage Companies to bring their carriages to our neighborhood. They um, help us board all of the passengers who have paid their, um, their ticket to get on the carriages. And they take us on these designated routes, which are approved by the city. And so all of the neighbors, which is amazing to me, the first year we decorated, we thought, eh, we'll get some people to decorate. But this last year, we had 70% of our neighbors decorating their homes, doing something, whether it was a decorated wreath or whatever it was. But that's really attributed to the success of hiring Sugar Creek Carriages to be part of our event. And um, they have helped, they, well, we started with, I think, just two carriages, maybe. Yes. The limo and the, and the Surrey. And um, then the next year, we went to two limos and the Surrey. It was kind of a really stretch for us. We thought, we're going to sell that many tickets. Last year, we did um, the Surrey, the two limos, the private carriage, the um, vis a -vis carriage, <coughs> four of them. And then this year, we've hired one more vis a -vis carriage. And the success has already been, we've sold half of our tickets, and our event is not until um, December 2nd and 3rd. So if, by the way, you're all welcome to buy tickets, and we have, <laughs> we have um, uh, group sales too, and, and we have uh, this wonderful little private carriage that uh, we also take photographs of. So in any event, um, I, I understand the situation and, and your rulings and, and the way you have to go, but I guess I'm asking if, um, he would be permitted to do our event. We've already done a tremendous amount of advertising. Um, we, in fact, we've, uh, if I could just one second. Thank you. This is the program that we put out, and I would love to have you take a look at it. This is the program that we do, and all of the people who, who um, come to the carriage events, carriage <coughs> tours, has one of those to take home. So. Um, all of those organizations, small businesses, companies support Hillsborough West End Neighborhood Association. And I think it would be a shame to have to you know, discredit what the neighborhood does um, and, and, and in the name of, of the carriage company. I, th I think that what we do has been very successful. They want to continue it. And it's, um, it, it's really my pleasure to be here today and to speak for Sugar Creek. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Bingston. Thank you, Amanda. I appreciate that. Uh, Commission members, I would remind you that it took three votes even to come up with what he was violating, what, what the rule was that he was supposedly violating. Um, I, uh, and I would, I should say this, we filed the uh, uh, application for writ of certiorari because that's the only alternative that we had. Uh, if this is, were to be set aside by you today, Obviously, we would voluntarily dismiss that and not trouble anyone with it any further. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bassett, would you like to say anything? I would. Thank you for the opportunity. Mr. Blackburn, how are you? Okay for an old man. <laughs> Aren't we both? <laughs> All right. Now, I'm kind of confused. Is, is, is this a continuation of the last hearing, and now we've decided to defend ourselves? Or is it a request? I, I'm, what is this? Did you file a formal 
formal request for a hearing. Is there a formal request for this hearing? What yes. we have in front of us today, Mr. Bassett, is a request to modify the penalty assessed All right. Sugar Creek. So he's already appealed to a higher court. Uh, and it seems like there's a lot of uh, ad hominem, ad nauseum here. It's, uh, and as long as he brought up the details, he brought up one instant claiming that someone had placed a hand on someone, and I agree that would be egregious. But there's no police report. I tried to find one. Do you have a copy of the police incident report? that you were holding the man or trying to hold the man for the police. I, I checked with the records department. There's no report saying that. But let's get directly to the point where he's asking for leniency and mercy. In the many complaints that were filed by Mr. Smith during various uh, complaints with Matthew Clark, Clint Moyne, and Hat Creek, at no point did they feel merciful. And they filed a complaint against Hat Creek because one of the drivers allowed an unlicensed driver to hold the reins. One driver, Hat Creek, the entire company was suspended for 30 days. The entire company for that one infraction. And my complaints weren't necessarily just Johnny Smith. I was trying to allow that I didn't need to drag down the group of people he's brought, which is why I didn't file complaints directly against them, but the company itself. And the fact that he isn't down there, you already saw in the video where I have been blocked from entering because they had to call Johnny Smith first to find out if it was okay. So he's directing this from wherever he is. Being there in person, that doesn't change anything. And in fact, if you modify this, you're rewarding bad behavior. And you're setting a precedent that you've uh, deliberated, you made a just and fair decision, and it's like they don't like the way the game was played, so they want to play the game over. At the same time, they're appealing. My suggestion is, and it's the easiest thing, let the Chancery Court handle it. He's already gone that direction. And uh, I believe I still have the same right of appeal if I'm not happy with the decision of the board from the last meeting, 60 days. And uh, he's addressing some complaints that I had the video for, but in the essence of time saving, they weren't shown. So, uh, and by the way, it wasn't 2009 it was 2010. I had uh, heard about working for Mr. Smith. I freely acknowledge my liberal use of anything and everything prior to this century. I had smoked marijuana with people before I ever even met Mr. Smith. Several weeks later, I took the test. I freely admitted that I used it. I'm not trying to hide anything. And uh, the, the claim that he fired me for possession, that's just fallacious. Uh, let's see. Uh, in good faith. I mean, it, it's just been one, let's attack the character of the person complaining. He said there was no visible proof. You watch the videos, it's visible proof. There's nine declarations here that are really just attacks on my character, my ability to drive. And uh, there are no dates, no times, no, uh, no ability for me to defend a general broad. Oh, I saw him up on a corner handing a lot of money to somebody, and then he put something under his seat. So obviously, to fit our story, it must be a drug deal. It's like Cheech and Chong and Pablo Escobar down there, the way it sounds. So. And I would also like to point out that if you had read these declarations clearly, you'd see there's contradictory statements among 
the people that made the declarations. So basically, I'm just asking you to reject this outright. If this is going to be a formal complaint, a formal hearing, where everything I brought up in the last meeting, at no time was I notified this was occurring. I emailed Mr. Fields at 6 a.m. this morning because I had read the agenda. And to tell you the truth, they're pretty predictable in what they attempt to say and do. He's not going to accept any responsibility for it. And if these people have hardship, and I feel for them, but the credit needs to go to the pilot in command, the captain of the ship, for his reckless behavior that puts these people out of work. Not your decision. It wasn't your decision to put the people out of work. It was his decision to behave like that that brought this forward. And if we're going to continue this, I certainly have probably two hours more of odd behavior and uh, the complaint that I parked illegally. I can show you 40 pictures of the same and everyone else parked illegally. Oh, Mr. he did Mr. approach Bassett. my carriage. Mr. Bassett, we're, we're not reopening the merits of the decision. This is purely just to consider whether we're going to alter well, the decision regarding the, the punishment imposed. Well, I was just addressing the things that had been brought up here. But I would uh, respectfully request you reject it outright and let the Chancery Court take care of it. Don't second guess your decisions. So, thank you. May I address the court, please? Cool. Um, I'm going to let Mr. Blackburn s say something in rebuttal. This is one of Mr. Smith's drivers. Uh, I know him well. I suspect what he would tell you is similar to what I'm telling you, and that is that that is what he's actually has been stated in these declarations, which is that uh, uh, inappropriate behavior is strictly forbidden among these drivers. They've all said that under oath. Mr. Bassett's testimony was not under oath. We've had that discussion in the past. I don't know that I'm right about that, <laughs> but I've raised it. Uh, but it's true that uh, you had nine statements under oath and then his, his rambling part. The, the, uh, there's one, one particular thing that I believe you may remember. There was a person named uh, Clint Lemoyne who works for the same company as Mr. Bassett. Mr. Lemoyne was on video backing his carriage into an animal, causing the Sugar Creek carriage to have to back up to the point where the car behind blew a horn. That same carriage ran over the foot of, of the farmhand who happened to be out there. That was seen, in fact, was reported, I believe, to Ms. DeMar DeMarco by one of her employees. You all suspended him for 100 days and put him on probation for some considerable period of time thereafter with no proof of any contact between anyone. Mr. Uh, uh, Smith is facing a 180-day suspension in the complete lack of evidence. Now, I would remind you that when we went through this uh, part about these fellows coming up to the stand and, and the, the disputes that they tend to have over who gets to be where, it was pointed out to the commission at that time that there are no rules to govern that. I have suggested numerous times, and I suggest again, that this commission should consider an alternate dispute resolution system of some kind to avoid just this kind of thing. I understand that you're here as good citizens, that you're not here because you're being paid lots of money to be here. I understand all that. And, and these uh, constant disputes among these people which can never be truly resolved because of the nature of it, have got to be a tremendous annoyance. That's why I gave you the nine declarations rather than calling all of those people as, as witnesses. And they were all here and could have been. Um, but what I would submit to you is that uh, a, a, a system of probation um, in which uh, if you believe Mr. Smith, continue to believe that Mr. Smith is the problem, 
despite a lack of evidence of, of it that was portrayed here, then, okay, he will remain away from that environment for the period that you determine. A condition of, his, of the probation will be that he do that. He has already begun that, even in the absence of a requirement that he do it. And he will continue to do it. He's given me my word. Uh, I believe him. I know he'll do it. Finally, um, this is a uh, this is a business that employs people who uh, how can I say it? Th these people have particular abilities, not terribly transferable abilities. Uh, dealing with these uh, animals, being trained, what you would have seen from the materials is that no one, no one has a training program equal to Sugar Creek's. He is, he is uh, qualified beyond that of anyone else. Um, and one of those qualifications, uh, that, uh, one of those uh, requirements that he imposes is not to engage in this sort of behavior that's accused. Mr. Bassett, you'll remember, filed a complaint that was lengthy, that had any number of things and had no names, didn't have dates, had nothing. We complained that we couldn't defend that, that that was insufficient to threaten a property interest with that something that vague. Um, there was some agreement to that. He was required to submit another. He submitted something, uh, a complaint that had eight, eight violations. None of those violations, none of those specific complaints were specifically found by vote. In fact, no particular one was even discussed. Now, you want to send a message that you're tired of hearing of this? I, I hear you. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not tired of doing it because it's uh, my job to come over here to do it. In your shoes, I would tire of this. But to put all of these people who are innocent out of work for six months because of something this vague, this undemonstrated, this unproved, would be highly inappropriate. I ask that you modify it. Can I ask you a couple questions? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So I understand the structure. Johnny Smith is the owner of Sugar Creek. Correct. All right. The characters are owned by whom? Sugar Creek. Okay. By him. By, by Mr. It's Smith. It's not incorporated. Okay. It's a DBA. And the horses are owned by whom? By Mr. Smith. Okay. So the people who stood up here are employees who simply drive the carriages? Correct. Okay. They have no uh, vested financial interest in Sugar Creek other, no. than, a, other than a paycheck? That, uh, yes. And, I, I, they're, and are they are essentially paid by what they do. That's what I was going to curious. Uh, is it a... They get paid by the piece or by the ride, or are they paid weekly, or what? They're paid by the uh, receipts from the customers themselves. In other words, yes, by the ride. So they are they're on a contingency fee basis ba uh, based on how much work they do. You could that that's a fair comparison. Okay, thank you. And, and, and sir, we, we do internet sales. That, that we have free sold tickets. And how do they get compensated for that? They for those uh, they sales. They have their cash money at the end of the evening. That, that's how they pay themselves. Okay. It's still done by the ride. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's piecework. Yes. Last month when we saw the, the videos, Last month when we were watching the videos, there were several people that worked for Sugar Creek that were on the videos. There was one gentleman who was on the street, and I remember seeing the video where he was blocking um, a, a mother and child from coming off of the, of the, <coughs> the carriage. Is he here today? No, ma'am. He was, uh, first of all, these photographs demonstrate that he was not blocking anyone. Uh, but secondly, this was a there was a farmhand who was present in one of the um, videos, and he was standing there, as I recall, if it's the one we're talking about, he was laughing. Now, no, that person is not regulated, is not permitted. The one who was standing there who was alleged to have been blocking the exit was Mr. Smith. Yeah. And he was not. 
and these photographs demonstrate that. No, this that. one that I'm talking about was not Mr. Smith. It was someone else, and maybe he wasn't blocking. He was a little further away, but he did have a conversation with the the rider, with the passenger of of another company's carriage. I don't remember a conversation. There was a conversation, and the mother even came down with the with the carriage. Yeah, that, that was Mr. Smith. Oh, that was you on yeah. there? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. That yeah. was you. I know. He was having a conversation with a, mm -hmm. a competitor's passenger, is what he was doing. And then there was the video of the other individual who was taunting Mr. Bassett as Mr. Bassett pulled in. Right. And, and I know your position, you're a great advocate, but we made our finding, and, and I, I, I disagree with you on what you see from those videos versus what this commission I, found last time. So. I respect that, but these and, people here weren't. I understand. Over the years, that. though, I have never heard of any passenger complain about the services that your company provides. And I haven't heard of passengers complaining about the services that the other companies provide as well. All I've heard is a lot of bantering going back and forth between or among all of the, of the companies. And that's when you always appear here, and it's always inappropriate behavior between a driver or you and the passengers of another carriage, the carriage owned by another company, a competing company, or the driver of a competing company. So you're standing here today telling me that they're a good company. We know that they provide a good service, but this is not the first time that they've come here. I don't agree with setting aside the decision that we made last month, although I'd like to hear what the other commissioners have to say, but I would be willing to to um, make a recommendation that instead of suspending their license for six months, that we put them on a probation for a year, for a full year, and Mr. Smith will not be permitted to, um, to be downtown when they're operating. But I also want the employees who are standing here today to be responsible for their actions as well, so that it's not just Mr. Smith not going downtown, and this is just a recommendation here among, I'm not making a motion, uh, that it's not just Mr. Smith going downtown, but that the drivers, Mr. Smith's drivers, do not have conversations, are not permitted to have conversations with the customers of any of the competing companies, that they're not allowed to show their middle finger to their to the customer, I'm sorry, I've seen this, and I'm just saying, I've, I've seen this happen, so I, I, I don't even know how to, how to articulate that, but that there's no communication between the drivers, Sugar Creek drivers, and the passengers or the drivers of another company's carriage if they have a passenger with them. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. I think that would be a good regulation for you to add, in fact, that apply to everyone. I, I, I would love to, but at this point we're talking about this right. particular situation. And that this, that they be on probation for a minimum of a year. All right, if I understand. What do you think about that? Let me make sure I understood <laughs> everything that was said. One year probation, Johnny Smith to be barred from downtown. Mm -hmm. That's the, condi the conditions of probation is Johnny Smith barred from downtown. And there'd be, in Sugar Creek's employees are not to communicate with the passengers slash customers of the other carriage companies. Or the drivers when they have customers with them. Oh, the drivers I've seen videos of that as well, where one driver might be um, talking or, or inappropriate behavior towards an, the driver of another company when, they're, when they have customers in their carriage. I understand the um, the reasoning why we would want to consider a restriction like that. Are there any First Amendment concerns um, in just prohibiting someone from speaking to someone else 
Um, uh, um, it, it, in a vacuum, there would be absolutely, um, given the regulatory context, um, it's a little bit less, it might be considered more of a time, place, and manner restriction, and it is probably, um, I don't know if it would be commercial speech, some of the speech that Ms. Marco was describing probably wouldn't be described as commercial speech. Um, but I know that we did have a First Amendment issue that, that was raised, I think, by Mr. Blackburn, Twice. actually, when um, there was a question of um, a person uh, being able to solicit um, uh, customers, um, uh, like some of the farmhands, I guess, were going up to um, uh, people, and we had a rule against that at one point that was actually, I believe, removed in response to an argument made by Mr. Blackburn that that was a violation of the First Amendment. Billy, you're sort of nodding. I hope I'm remembering right. that correctly. January 31st, 2013. It um, was it was vacated. So, so this is probably a little Sorry. different from that, but it, it still does go in that direction. So I think the chair's rationale for raising the concern. The other concern I would have just in terms of the drivers not being able to speak to each other is more of a practical concern that they might sometimes need to speak to each other to coordinate the two carriages pulling up at the same time. But I would defer to people who know more about operating carriages than me in, in if, if it's of any help, I don't think a prohibition against rude discussions among drivers of any company is a First Amendment issue. It may be just if, if the conversation discourteous and rude <laughs> communications. <laughs> if the if the conversation has to do with traditional protected speech, criticizing a candidate or what that type yeah. of thing, then it's different. But that's not what we're talking yeah. about. The commercial speech matter uh, was uh, was. Four square commercial speech. It was soliciting uh, rides, uh, and uh, we did file a lawsuit because of that. That was dismissed uh, by us because of the fact that uh, the rules changed, so it was mooted out. So I don't think that. It, I do think, though, and some people were asking me questions while I was sitting here. They do need to have some communications with one another for for safety reasons. We've heard. All of them will say, would you move up? Would you move forward? Things of that nature. And I defer to the attorney here to make the motion. And that's why I specifically said, I'm just, I'm not making a motion. I'm just telling you how I feel. And I'm going to allow the attorney to actually make the motion. Is there, other, uh, is there any more discussion though? Or thoughts? What's, what's the name of the guy who we saw that was, in my opinion, taunting Mr. Bassett? He, uh, his name was Nick, but he wasn't uh, Just what's his name? Nick. 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 What's his last name? I don't know. I can't remember, but I fired him. He's gone then. Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Fields knows that he, he was dishonorably discharged from the military, and he I saw issues with the gentleman also, mm. so I fired him. After the last hearing? No. 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 Before. before he, said, he only worked for me for about two weeks. <coughs> okay. Well, that takes care of my other concern. Anyone else have any other thoughts on the matter? Sounds like there might be a motion coming. So well, I don't want to foreclose anyone else's concerns or issues that they want to make sure are addressed. Or, um, I have one other thought: is that uh, you know this was Mr. Turner's motion and he's not here today mm. and <clears throat> I, I don't want to step on someone's toes either uh, frankly I wouldn't mind if, if I made a motion and then the panel or the commissioners here thought at the next meeting and I wasn't present if they thought it needed to be reconsidered I you know, certainly respect that wisdom um, but I don't know has anybody else got any thoughts or concerns about Reconsidering with I'm Mr. Not Turner. An expert not on Robert's rule of board. What I think you would have to do is you got two findings. One that there was a violation, two that a punishment that went with it. What you would do is there would be, I think you'd rescind, and I'm, I'm thinking that's right, waiting for Ms. Costello to say no, but my impression is you would you would rescind that action. That action has the, the person who made the people who voted for it have to have noticed that it could be done. Um, or the commission would have to vote two thirds. Two thirds of the commission would have to vote for the rescission. 
So it would take more than a simple motion. I'm, I'm just checking the minutes. Um, mm -hmm. We want to make sure that the, um, the motion on the finding of the violation was articulated separately from the um, uh, motion. Um, yeah. Thank you. On the, um, it's on the second page of the minutes. Yeah. yeah. The first was a violation. The first was a violation, yeah. And then the second um, was a um, extension for 180 days. Um, so I do not think, if you did not wish to, that you would have any need to revisit um, the motion of Vice Chair Turner with a second from Commissioner Marco to find violation of section 1254070A2 and 9. Um, but the second motion um, to suspend the certificate of public convenience and necessity for sugar free carriages for 180 days, you, you would need to do um, either a motion to rescind or amend would be appropriate at this point in time. I, seems to me like what has sort of been discussed so far would probably be such a complete amendment that it would effectively amount to rescission. So I think it would be a motion to rescind. Um, and I mean, may I say that the, the commission speaks as a body. Um, so, uh, you know, the commission takes no action as an individual. You, you all speak collectively as a body. So this body today absolutely has the authority to rescind what was done at the previous meeting. All right, well, let's take this in steps. I make a motion to rescind the suspension of the Certificate of Public Convenience and Necessity for Sugar Creek Carriages uh, that was suspended for 180 days for the violation of MCL 12.54. Do we have a second from anyone? We are, we are rescinding this because we are considering the amendment. I anticipate if it is rescinded to make another motion fairly consistent with uh, what Ms. Margo said, okay. suggested. And the outcome of this amendment would be to allow them to immediately start to operate with... They actually are able to operate currently right. because of the provision in the rules that says that they are, um, that their disciplinary action is suspended while an appeal of the pre previous decision of this commission um, is pending. And so they, they, they've never lost the ability to operate? No, no not, not to this point. They filed, they, they appealed to the Chancery Court? Yes. Uh, okay. it, is, it is on appeal. Now, our amendment would then supersede your decision to go to the Chancery Court, or you would rescind that decision to take this to the Chancery Court? Well, you're, the, 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 motion, the motion is not to rescind the finding itself. The finding itself is primarily what is appealed. Uh, that's what the, when, when you look at whether there's material evidence to support it, that's what you, you look to. As a practical matter, as a practical matter, it would, um, it would probably moot this. Certainly, if the six months that was already imposed was ch changed, uh, my to, to suspension with the, excuse me, probation, with the condition that uh, Mr. Smith not be in the downtown, I would uh, I would discuss with him whether it was prudent to go forward with a chancery court, whether he want to go to that time and expense, and I would have that discussion with him, and uh, among other reasons, so that it could commence right now. Right. And I and I only ask that because the the company hasn't lost operation, and they still have the intentions of pursuing this in chancery court. Why are we? rescinding it? Well, I think that it's two separate issues because regardless of what we do, whether Sugar Creek and or at Mr. Blackburn's advice decides to pursue its appeal or not, that's their decision. 
you know, they've come to us today asking for uh, us to uh, revise our decision with regard to the punishment imposed. Um, and regardless of what we do, they, they, they may pursue the appeal on the, on the merits of the issue, whether it was a violation, they can do that. Their, their motion, from what I understand, the motion before us today is um, they want they want to know that, and they're asking the commission please reconsider the punishment so that for them their worst case scenario is um, if their appeal fails then they you know they're only going to be dealing with a probationary period for and with with uh, their owner being on the sidelines for that period of time so that's that's what that's why they're before us today. Um, so the only reason why we would consider revising our punishment is based on the arguments and uh, materials that Mr. Blackburn has brought before us today. It's not for any other reason. We, as a practical matter, if it doesn't keep all of these people from earning a living, there's obviously much less. Uh, motivation to go to the time and expense. A Chancery Court uh, writ involves putting together the <coughs> whole package, all of the evidence, that whole thing. It's, it's, a, it's an involved thing. Then there's all kinds of briefs that have to be written. There's all, and then you got to go argue it. This was assigned to uh, Chancellor Perkins, I saw. So we'd have to go take his time to do it. Mr. Smith uh, is not routinely down there. Uh, does not have to be routinely down there. You would certainly see him as something like this neighborhood association uh, thing. And if he had problems that he needed to address with the condition of animals or something like that. Uh, but they can operate, these people here can operate without his presence and the only, the only discussion that was had at the hearing about improper behavior aside from this uh, farmhand who is not subject to the discipline of this commission because he's not a permittee. That was pointed out at the time of the hearing. Was Mr. Smith, I can solve that. I can keep Mr. Smith at home and will. And he already is at my advice. So if he's already done that and we were to drop that uh, petition, then we go back to the date of your ruling and his, his uh, number of days, whatever it happens to be, commences then. And Maybe we can all walk away from this having learned something. <laughs> One other question, if I may. Do we have a, so the provision of us rescinding this and adding the amendment is the one-year probation with, if that violation is broken, then what? So, so when you impose point. probation, um, you, you would certainly be looking to not have additional violations occur um, during the probationary period, whatever period of time that is, and you can also articulate specific conditions on that probation. Um, one thought or suggestion um, that I was just discussing with Ms. Ladd and Mr. Field is that maybe in terms of the concern about the rude or discourteous communications, um, that um, the specific con um, condition could just be um, that Sugar Creek's drivers would comply with um, uh, section 1254-200, especially, you see the subsection? Subsection A1. Subsection A1, could, could you? Yeah, which is a driver shall at all times act in a reasonable, prudent, and courteous manner. So if that kind of covers what Ms. Marco had in mind, um, you know, that could be, articulated specifically as the condition on the probation um, as, um, as you know the requirements so that if we if during the probationary period um, there are violations of that that would that's something that they're charged with with adhering to anyway like their own driver's permits um, can be revoked or suspended if they don't comply with the pro provisions that are specifically applicable to drivers um, which are articulated in that section 1254-200. Um, so, so they should really be doing that anyway, but we can also make that a specific condition of 
the entity, the certificate holders, probation, that they ensure that their drivers do in fact comply with um, those requirements. Um, and then if there is a, a violation during the probationary period, um, then I think that would be brought back before you and you would have the ability to s suspend them in lieu of continuing the probation. And this is on an individual driver basis and not Sugar Creek as a whole? So the discipline is against Sugar Creek as a whole, but you're charging the certificate old holder with being responsible for the behavior of its employees and charging them to ensure that their employees do toe the line and do comply with the, the conditions that they are supposed to comply with anyway under the code. So if there's a violation during the probationary period? You would also, the, since that's also a code violation, however, you would always have the option of disciplinary the driver as well on his, driver, his or her driver permit. So you could do both if you wish to. And again, I guess the clarification I'm looking for is if that violation occurs, <coughs> well, they, uh, it's it a it year be from that point, the rest of the <coughs> the rest of the period of the year suspension. It's whatever you, you want at that point. Oh, we would, would be back at that point. Right. Okay. I, yeah, I think okay. Would, yeah, it would it would end at the at the end of the period of probation. But if it if a violation was alleged to have occurred in the interim period during the probationary period. I think you would want to, that to come back before you because you would probably want to make a factual finding as to whether a violation in fact occurred. Okay, you could bring, bring again, make that motion again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'd like to restate the motion I previously made, which is to rescind, make a motion to rescind our previous uh, ruling of suspending the Certificate of Public Convenience and Necessity for Sugar Creek for 180 days. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Motion passes. Would appear we're ready now for a motion regarding what disposition after our previous finding of a violation, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. All right. Um, I would make a motion that Sugar Creek carriages be placed on one year probation. Uh, that the specific conditions of that probation is that the owner, Johnny <coughs> Smith, would be barred from the downtown carriage area. Uh, that there'd be a heightened, that Sugar Creek uh, heightened their for provision 12.5. 54.200 subsection A, subsection 1, that all drivers will treat each other with reasonable, prudent courtesy, and all conversations of, that are rude or discourteous will cease. And that applies uh, specifically to the drivers of other carriage companies and the passengers' customers of other carriage companies. So if there's a violation by one of the drivers of 1254-200, uh, then it would be considered a probation violation by Sugar Creek? Correct. Yes. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any nays? Motion passes. Thank you. I would observe this is going to be a terrible temptation for frivolous complaints to be filed. I'm just, but you ruled. I'm satisfied with the ruling, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, has your company ever thought about putting video cameras on the carriages? They do. Like, they have it they on. do. Okay, you got them on your body, like yeah, body cameras. I've got a, okay. an enormous stockpile of the videos that I haven't turned in, and I really do. A lot. Uh, maybe six or seven well, I'm just worried. I'm just interested in the future. I've tried to discourage filing more complaints unless they involve physical contact, like the one we brought here, from Mr. Lamont. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Their emotions can run high, especially in the summer. <laughs> well, we are into winter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> True.
Mr. Fields, that brings us to the end of the agenda. Is there any other business? At the last meeting, you had asked me to explore the concept of additional training for various drivers of low-speed vehicles, slow-speed vehicles, pedal carriages, pedicabs, horse and carriages, so forth. I have met with the Convention and Visitors Corporation. They're prepared to help us do that. I don't have a specific proposal to bring to you today, but if you'd like for me to pursue that, uh, I think between what we would do as a staff, because I think it is going to require some staff time, uh, I think the CVC will be able to provide some uh, expertise to discuss the, the kinds of things that we were just talking about there in that motion. So I will put together as quickly as I can bring something back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion Aye. passes. What a day. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.